Now we are going to be making a box envelope. Now this box envelope is going to be living back here on the left panel, right over the chipboard. For my original video, if we go back all the way back to this box envelope, this is how it is. This is the size. The only problem I had with this once I made it is since it's a box all the way around, you don't have a lot of room to put your fingers in here to get whatever is in here. So I made, I created a modified boxed envelope that has an accordion on each side. Now I am going to show you the process video on how we are making this modified boxed envelope. It has the accordion on the side here. The width here is the exact same width as this one that I showed you in the walkthrough. The only difference is this is going to have more room this way. So it's going to be fitting in here like this. It's going to be ending around here. I am going to show you how to make this. I am using different car um, designer paper because I have no designer paper left that's big enough to make this because I went through it all. I will show you, if you want to use this pink, I will show you how I created this pink part. And like I said, these, the size of this, the face of this box envelope is exactly the same as this modified version. So that part's going to be the same. What's going to be different is when you put in the designer paper here, you're going to have to extend the designer paper out to this flap. On this piece, I used the designer paper from the collection that I had left, and I picked up some old Stamperia paper that, that complemented this paper, and I extended it all the way through this flap. So I will show you the construction of these, this color. Just be mindful that it's going to extend out more. This part's going to be extending out more. I hope it makes sense. And once you get it constructed, you can figure out what kind of designer paper you want. If you have a stash of Stamperia paper that complements complements this, this um, pink, if you want to use that, go ahead and use it. This is just a process video on how this was built. The designer paper is up to you. I hope that makes sense. Just be mindful, you will be having magnets here, 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 here. There are, let's see, one, two, two sets here, and another set here. Another set here and here. So I will show you the videos. Hopefully you can follow through. Just, just build this. And um, I think it will make sense once you get started. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Don't be too harsh with your comments because this is really hard to go back and start all over. And this took me like two days to figure out the dimensions and get this, this right for you. So hopefully it will go smoothly for you. So to start, you will need a 100 pound black cardstock. So I am using a 100 pound black cardstock. This is 10 inches by six and a half inches. You're going to put the 10 inch side on top and you are going to get your score, the score, and you are going to put it in and you are going to score at nine and one quarter, nine and a half and ten, it, 
nine and a half, and nine and three quarters. Flip it around on the other side, same thing. Nine and a quarter, nine and a half, nine and three quarters. Flip it to the bottom. So the, the six and a half inches on top, and you're going to score it three quarters of an inch and one inch. So that is your base piece for your envelope. Now, if you do not want to add the acetate window, just skip through this, this part because I'm going to show you how to do that. But for those of you that are interested in knowing how to do the, the, the acetate window, what we're going to do, and um, first, first thing we need to actually put, cut our, our designer paper that we're going to put on top of here. I will insert the original video so you can see the color and the paper, the decorator paper that I used for my album. I have gone through all my paper. I really don't have any scraps big enough to recreate that. So I am going to be using what little scraps I have left, not the color that I put in the album, but just to show you the process. So let me get my scraps. So now we're ready to work on this box envelope. So get your box envelope. Remember we, we cut it, we got it all ready. We haven't done anything with it. We're going to be covering this with designer paper. So I'm, we didn't cover it yet because I wanted to pull some scraps. I didn't want to use a bunch of paper um, until I knew what we were doing. So. I pulled out, these are some scraps I have. Here's, here's this one. I'm going to put this up at the corner here. Here's this one. And it doesn't have to be exactly the same one. It's just a different contrasting color with a little bit of green, but it has the pink in there. That's gonna go here. And then Here's another little piece. So I'm going to have this little contrasting strip here. And then go back to the pink here. So it's going to look more like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scotch tape this together. I'm not going to be um, inking the edges when I butt these together and scotch tape them and then once I get it all together then I will place it on my envelope on the top of the envelope so find any scraps that you like preferably that have more of a pink tone because it's going to be up against um, a piece like this so we want a little more contrast but it really doesn't matter. This is just um, way in the back. Find any papers that you like that go together. And I'm going to, I'll be back. So here's my piece put together. I think it's so pretty. And there's the back side where I seamed it together with some scotch tape. So this is going to be adhered on to here and once I get that on I will align my die with these measurements and then I will put it through my die machine and hopefully it will cut through both this paper and my hundred pound cardstock So I cut my paper to fit 
right inside those score lines that make the box all the way around. So it's going to fit like this. Very pretty. Not the one I used, but this is a this is a, a good you can't go wrong with this paper. Everything's beautiful. Anyway, so that's how it's going to fit. Now, I made the mistake last time because I've done this already. I went ahead and adhered this, applied my my die to make my little window, but then we have magnets under here where the top part's going to co go over. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm just going to place it where I want it, add my repositional, re, repositional tape, and just kind of tape it into place. So for this die, my now this die, its opening measures two and a quarter, and I think by four and a quarter, by four and a quarter. It is going to be, you are going to put the die or make your opening. It's going to be two inches up from the bottom edge. So I'm gonna put this in here. Two inches up from the bottom edge. I'm gonna just make a pencil mark. And let's see, what was it? It was two, let me measure. It is two and three quarters, I believe. It is two and three quarters from the bottom. So two and three quarters from the bottom. Two and three quarters right there. So that's going to give me where those lines intersect two and three quarters. No, wait, it was two inches from this long end, two inches up, and two and three quarters up from this bottom end, two and three quarters up. So where it intersects is where I'm going to be placing my die. Again, I'm going to be using repositional tape. And put before I do that, um, and I've had this happen too, when you put it through the die machine, it is, if you're not careful, it's going to, because it's a little bit wider than the die machine, so it's going to smash part of your edges. So what you do is you go ahead and burnish this three quarter of an inch edge here. We'll fold and burnish this one. And you can put this down. This is going to get smashed we put it through the die machine, but that's okay. That's just our, our flap that's going to be adhered to a bottom piece. So fold that three quarter of an inch edge in. And let me show you how we're going to put it on that the die machine. There we go again. So we're going to put the, the die in and put it in with repositional tape. And now to put it in the die machine, you want to make sure that the plates completely go over this top edge. And it's going over most of the bottom edge, but I want it to go completely over the top edge and then have an equal amount of the top and bottom sticking out because I'm not sure how much is going to get smashed here, um, but probably this part will down here. 
So get that the plates lined up. And now they're lined up and I'm going to put it in the die machine. And it did get smashed on this paper. And I think it's because of this edge there. But so you can see, I don't know if you can see it, but it's a little bit noticeable. The paper got wavy there because of um, this flap underneath it. But I think I can take that out if I put some score tape on it to flatten it out. I just don't like any of those waves. That's upsetting. That's upsetting to me because I, oh my gosh. But this edge, which is the edge I want it to be safe, is okay. So that part's safe. So anyway, it is what it is. The other one that I made wasn't, didn't have this long, this bit here. And you can see where the die machine kind of smashes this down a little bit. But on, on this, I don't really care. It was the, the paper I cared about. But anyway, it'll still work. And I think we can um, fix that too. It's paper, paper, you can always fix paper. So I'm gonna put this aside because we're not we're not going to be using it for now. So next to make the backing piece that this is going to fit on in our cover, a flap cover, you are going to get another piece of a hundred pound cardstock and cut it eight and a half by nine. Now the nine inch side is gonna go up and you're going to score it at what was it, six and a quarter? Yes, I think six and a quarter. By six and a half. Six and a quarter, six and a half. And go ahead and fold and burnish those. Get those straight. So we have this quarter inch gusset up on the top. So this is going to be our cover flap. So now you're going to do the accordion folds for these three uh, one quarter inch score lines. So start from the inside, fold, burnish, Go to the outside, fold, and burnish. Try to get these as straight as you can. And then the last one is going to be folded towards the inside. Fold and burnish. So you have your little accordion like that. And you're going to do the exact same thing to this side. So once you have those done, go ahead and spread them out a little bit. And you're going to fold and burnish this gusset down here. So we've already done that one. Need to know, do the inner one. So 
Okay, so that gusset is now formed. So next we're going to um, attach our little acetate window. Oh, I forgot to I forgot to turn on the camera. So there's my little uh, acetate window, and I'm just framing it with quarter inch tape, getting just making sure I get close to the edge of the window, but covering the acetate. Just this last piece here. So the acetate window is in. Now, normally I put black construction tape over this because um, you don't want to be seeing the white because this is going to be, this is going to be black so when you're looking into the window you'll see this white so my dilemma do i pull the tape and put this over it let's see tape on tape is okay i just need to make sure i don't pull and tear anything So I need to cover that sticky tape so nothing sticks when it goes inside, but I don't want to cover that window. So I am going to actually get my head down here and line it up because I can't see. So there I framed it with the black construction tape and it looks really nice. Now we're going to, what are we, what are we going to do? We're going to be doing some cutting. Now where these score edges, so we have this top score here, and then this score, we're going to go to the top score here, all the way to this inner score line, right there, and then this one, this score line. We are going to be cutting out this right rectangle right here on both sides. So let me do that. And now I can't see where the line is because I made that pencil mark. And here. And I just want, don't want to go into this edge. I want to make sure I don't I don't cut into this corner. We can trim it up if we need to. And the way we need to trim it up, if you pull this flap back and you look at this edge, you just want it to be flush. So just going to do a little trimming right there. And then same thing with this side, fold the bottom one in and see this little thing where it's sticking out right there. You're just going to fold that and you're going to trim this straight. kind of straight like that. Same thing on this side. We're going to cut you're going to cut this this score line that goes down, this inner score line, and then this one. So we're going to cut that out. And tr do any trimming if you need to. Fold this bottom one in. Trim this. Fold this one in, the side one in, and trim this bottom one. Got a little bit overhang there. I think that's okay. So what we're going to be doing... No, 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 no. You know what you're going to do first? Oh my gosh. 
we need to attach this bottom piece, this bottom piece to this first. That's right, we need to attach, attach this bottom piece to this piece first. So you're going to fold your three quarter of an inch flap back and you're going to apply score tape to cover this entire edge. And then I will do that and be right back. So here's your flap piece, your base piece with this is your um, closure right up here. So you're, you got the score tape on that three quarter of an inch section. You're gonna fold it back. Here's your gusset. And you are going to adhere this to this back part. You're gonna line it up all the way to the edge and pull that score tape. Now I need to go in there and pull out. I've got another piece of score tape in there. So I'm just going to reach in there and pull that out. And just burnish that real. Now we have this lip. You can either put some um, scotch tape or black construction tape here, or you can um, be using, you're going to be inserting paper, so probably don't need to do that. So yeah, we're going to be inserting designer paper and we're going to make sure it goes over that lip so whatever we put in this pocket doesn't hit this lip. Okay, next step. So what we're going to be doing, with we're going to be attaching these accordion pieces to this back panel. So make sure your accordion is nice and it's been burnished down real well like that. You're going to fold this over and you want to make a square here. So we're going to be attaching this accordion, the back piece, this inner inner piece of the accordion to this base piece. So it will be attaching along this edge and it will be right along this entire edge. So what I'm going to do, Quarter inch tape's a little bit too big. I've already tried it. I had to snip some of it off. I'm gonna try two overlapping one eighth inch tapes. Um, you can also use glue. I just don't like glue because if I screw up, I can't take it off. But I'm gonna get it squared up so this end looks like that. So what I did is I put um, one eighth of an inch tape down and then I put it tore off the cover and then put the other one on and what let's see if that works if that's enough I'm going to be pulling this up oh, just a little bit making the square here and then pushing this in So we've made our square. Now it's just laying this down and lining it up with the base piece and pulling the tape. That's lined up. And just pull the rest of the tape. And now that accordion is attached. So I'm going to go ahead and put my eighth inch tape on here. 
pull the score tape off, put another strip of eighth inch tape uh, on this end and do the same thing. So both sides are in and they look really good. Nice and squared off there. And this back piece helps keep this from collapsing down in here. So now we're going to round the corners here. If you have a corner rounder, I use the large size here. Now we need to add magnets. This is what I forgot to do in my, I've already made one of these and I forgot to put the magnets. So we're going to be attaching magnets here and here and transferring them down here. So let me get the magnets and I'll be right back. So we have a, the magnets placed up here. So make sure you leave room for the designer paper to get around those magnets. Um, those are placed there, so going to put my transfer one here. And then we want to close this so we form that square up here. So we have a, this square, we want this to be squared off. We don't want it pulled down too, too far down, but we want to make a nice square. I'm going to bring it up to my eyes. And that looks pretty good. Transfer that one. And let me see this one. So get this one squared. We're looking for this square right here. Get this one squared. That looks good. And transfer this one down. So we transferred our magnets over and these look pretty squared. So now I'm just gonna put some tape up here to keep these secure too, so they don't go anywhere. Now to do the designer paper over this part down here, this envelope. I am still kind of upset, I'm very upset about it the dye machine wrinkling my my paper. I'm just going to put this in here so I can see better. <clears throat> what I did is I adhered lots of score tape down here where the paper got wrinkled from the dye machine. And I'm going to get that here and slowly pull that tape. And then I got my edges up here. So I'm going to make sure I get it aligned with my pocket and slowly start pulling my tape. Make sure you, you put tape around the window also, or you can go ahead once it's in, add some glue under here because you need to affix this down either way. And if you use glue, um, you can do that too to get this affixed. So I'm going to work with this and get it get it to where I want it and start pulling the tape. Yay! I got it on and the waves, I got them out. That tape really got them out. So there is the pocket. It looks so pretty. Okay, now, um, if you go to your stash, you may have some leftover scraps. But I want to put this piece, hopefully you still have enough of this piece. This piece is going to go in this pocket. We're going to slide it over those lips up here. And you're going to go all the way down to the end and over that bottom lip. So everything that goes in there is going to be nice and smooth. Get your pencil. Oop. Do a pencil mark so you know where to cut the paper. 
and I'll be back. So I want to go back. Um, I showed you the original video of using this green piece of paper that fit in here because it kind of met it well it did it's the same paper that I used for this strip here now this this modified version it is the same size as this this part but I extended this part here so whereas this green piece that you just inserted ended right at the edge of the pocket right here what you could do um, if you have more of that green, you could extend it all the way up, but I, I did not. That was the, the last bit of my green paper there. You What you could do with this pink paper is start the pink paper, butt it right up to the edge of that green paper, and then continue it down, you know, all the way up to the flap and just get cut a little piece, of, a little bit less than a, a quarter of an inch for this strip here and extend it all the way up. The other option is if you have a piece that is wide enough and long, um, long enough, you can insert it as one piece all the way down and then just cut this strip and this strip. I used, for this, my, my process video, I used an, another piece of Stamperia from another collection just to put in to con continue it all the way across. So you don't have to use any of the designer papers I'm showing you. This is the one I chose for this. I just wanted the pink here. If you don't want the pink, you want to use this paper. Go ahead with that paper. If you have extra Stamperia paper from another collection, you can go ahead and use that. These are just ideas. I just wanted to show you how to build this and how it's going to be fitting in here. So for... The original video and the way I made this one, I used pink going all the way across this way. And pink on the top with just that green insert for the acetate window. The choice is yours. Do what you please and what scraps or paper that you have left. And instead of going back to the original video, I want to show you this piece that we put in on this left flap here. Now this left flap is this page right here. This was the first 100 pound paper that you put in with that quarter inch gusset here. This left panel is where your envelope is going to go. So on this left flap right here, it's a, it's a big page, you are going to be, number one, finding the paper that's going over here, getting it to size. Don't put it on yet because of the magnets, but let me show you the paper we're going to be using. This paper. The way I cut this is I cut it from the bottom. I wanted this little fairy to be standing on this edge of the bottom down here. So that's where I cut it. And the size of this piece is basically like eight and a half, eight and a half. And it goes all the way across. I started from this end. I made a, a little less than quarter inch strip to fill in this end here. And then I just cut the page to fit this way. So this is how this page is going to be cut. And then I cut this little saying, dreaming from the Sleeping, um, Sleeping Beauty collection. So that is how this is going to fit. Now with this piece, you cut the paper, do not put it on yet, because you need to put those magnets in. So you're going to put magnets in this corner and magnets in this corner. And I also put a pull tab right in the center on this, on this piece right here. Once you get your paper cut, 
into size. Go ahead and put your magnets down. Get your little pull tab. Here's a little pull tab. Get your little pull tab. Put that down here. Center it. And you, you can now put your paper on. Hopefully I'm making sense. This is hard to do um, two videos when I made the original and now doing an updated version. But you know what paper to use, right? Cut it to size, get your little almost quarter of an inch strip, a little less than um, a quarter of an inch to put in here. It's 1 16th less than a quarter of an inch to put in here. Get this paper cut to size, put in your little swing rib, your little pull ribbon and get your magnets up in the corner. Once you have that done and you have added your little green strips here or whatever scrap paper you have, you're gonna be adding little strips to the corner of this edge, the corner of this edge, and then the corner of this edge. Let me show you what I mean. Now this, this piece, it's going to be sitting in here. Where do you put it? You're going to be covering this with score tape. That's what I did. You're going to be putting it in, in here. You're going to center it with this flap, but you want this magnet, these two magnets, to transfer over their magnets to the edge of this box envelope. So they're going to be adhering right into those corners of that, of that boxed envelope, that modified boxed envelope. That's where you're going to be putting your boxed envelope, where this meets and where it's flush. You want this to be flush. So far so good. Then you're just going to get a pencil and you're going to draw a line on your album. This line tells you where you're going to be putting your box envelope. So you just need a little space. You just need to cover just this little black space with some paper. You don't want all this black part here. Same thing over here. If this is going to go here, you need to cover the end of this box, this part of the flap. You don't want all this blackness here. So you're going to cut it a, a piece of designer paper to cover here and to cover this bit. You don't need any designer paper up here or here. You just want to cover here and here. I used for this one, I used the green paper, same paper that I used in here. This is wider because this box envelope does not come up as far down. But I used this green paper here, and I used the same green paper at this little bit right here. See that? And then I just placed my box envelope over this. And then this, this piece just goes right on top and closes right over the box envelope. So they're flush here. Hopefully you can see that. Don't know how to make it any more clearer. Um, if you have questions, let me know, but it it's not, I'm making it harder than it is. It's just going to be fit. This one's just a little bit wider. This part's the same width, but the magnets are gonna be here and here. I think, I think that covers it. Um, so once you get your strips in, get this lined up, get it squared away, put your magnets here and here, here and here. And then you'll be done with this, this part of the left panel. 
And now we're gonna go on to the, the right panel and it won't be as complicated as this, hopefully. 